This is something more for my own curiosity, but also might show something of interest for some people. Uh, what I've got is this Dolmar 7900, and I've got four different D009, the large Husky mount bars that it runs. Just want to go through showing uh, what sort of effect the bar length has on the saw's weight and its balance, and I'll try and explain a little bit of why I tend to run the short stuff. So what we've got is a 16, 20, 26 and a 36 inch bar. I'll mount them all up with a bar and chain. The saw is full of fuel and oil, so it's as it would be ready to use. I'll take weights of it as we go through and I'll try and show the balance of the saw. So we'll just work our way through these and see what we learn, if anything. All right, so this is set up with a 16 inch GB Arbor Pro bar with uh, the GB's attempt at making a lightweight bar, so they're made 1.6mm thinner. Uh, they're a solid bar, replaceable nose tip, just overall a bit thinner. It's a 58 gauge bar, but they are pretty light for what they are. Uh, Saw's fueled, ready to go, uh, full of bar oil with a bar and chain on it. It's 8.1 kilos. So it's pretty lightweight for such a uh, big saw. This thing's, uh, I think they're 4.7 kilowatts, uh, 79 cc. So you get a, a lot of power for your weight there, really. The balance of the saw, if you pick it up, it's perfect. It sits nice and level. It's really nice to use like this. There's not a lot of nose weight. So when you're tilting the saw up and down, trying to get to things and moving it around, it's, it's really well balanced. It's a very short bar length, but works really well on this and overall from the front of the spike to the end of the chain we're looking at about 330-ish mil so about 13 inches maybe a little tiny bit over that so yeah not a bad combination i enjoy using it like that i'll try and explain a bit more of it later but we'll move on to the next bar now i've got the saw set up with a 20 inch bar on it weight's gone up to 8.6 kilos now so again, about 500 grams of extra weight. Uh, how much extra bar length did we gain? We are now about 450, so about 18 inches. So gained an extra uh, five inches of usable bar length for half a kilo of weight. The balance on this starts to go a little bit towards the notes, even with this, they're generally better running laminate bars on these uh, at 20 inches to keep it it's not it's not bad to use in any way shape or form it's it's still really good it's just um a little bit different to running the short bar on it so we'll go up another bar size while i've still got this bar on here i should explain this is different on every saw uh, the 288 clone i got has a bar studs mounted closer to the front of the saw and different shaped uh, spikes on the front. When this bar's on that, it's actually about 520 mil, so it's about 70 mils more usable bar on that saw. Um, it's going to be different on every saw depending on what you use, just showing what happens as you go through the sizes here. Alright, going up another size, we're now Saw's now at uh, 9.1 kilos for the whole setup. This bar is a Windsor Speed Tip. Uh, it's marked as a 26 inch bar. It takes 89 drive lengths. Um, for reference, the still mid-mount bars, uh, a 25 inch takes uh, 84 drive lengths. So this is a bit longer than that, but not quite the 92, 93 lengths of a 28. It sits in the middle. Overall length, we're now up to about 620 mils, so about 20, 24, 25 inches out the front. we lost a fair bit of our balance by this point. It starts becoming nose heavy. For the kind of cutting I generally do, uh, I'll keep running the short bars as long as I can. Once you start getting into the stuff like this and the next one up, the balance isn't as critical. Um, and I'll explain why with the 36 on there. All right, now this is another Windsor Speed Tip bar. It's 119 drive links of still 36 RSLF, so it's a skip square chain. Uh, with the 
but this bar and chain the saw is now 10.2 kilo so we've gone up a kilo over having the 26 on it um there is no balance left to the saw it is it is terrible to use like this for a lot of work overall out the front bar is pretty much a genuine 36 inches so it gives us right at 900 mil so that's right on three foot out the front once you've reached this point you don't really care so much about balance because if you're using something like this for its intended purpose you lift it up once you put it on top of the log and you hold on to it for the next minute or two as it tries to work its way through these saws don't really have the oil pump for running a 36 inch bar they will run a 32 okay but um 36 is a little bit much for uh i generally don't like running it on it but i do have i do have bigger saws so generally if i'm going if i require a 36 inch bar then it's time for the 880 um because there's just no real point um there is a, a very big difference in cutting speed going from something like this to the 880 once it's this big so this generally lives its life with um with the shorter bars on it and that's got a bit to do with how we use them here and, and how the trees grow so we'll try and explain a bit more of that i'll put a more normal size bar on it all right so we're back with the little bar on the saw i'll try and explain some of the reason why this is done uh, i'm based in australia the way the trees grow here are a little bit different to what you'll see from uh most of the american guys cutting uh they're dealing with trees sort of um the entire length of it will be one large diameter log with a lot of little sort of two to four inch limbs coming off of the whole way up the tree and they'll generally go down and limit by walking down the tree on top of it the europeans take a different approach so they're dealing with a similar thing but they'll run a lot shorter bar and then um they'll walk down the side of it keeping the saw up on the side of the log and working it around the way trees grow here we generally get a large diameter trunk that will extend up maybe only 10 meters or so about 30 foot and then it grows into a, a big crown when we're cutting them for firewood most of the wood we're chasing is up in that crown um you will take the obviously take all the trunk and everything but most of your cutting time is spent up dealing with that stuff uh up up in the top there you'd be dealing with wood anywhere from uh, around two inches in diameter up to sort of 20 24 inches on a big tree and they're just the limbs in the top when you're cutting in that environment you may be cutting you know something that long but on the other side of it we've got all the branches and everything uh, all the small stuff up in the top of the tree so kickback becomes a real concern um, if you're to run say a the 26 inch bar and when you're cutting up in there you run the risk of putting the bar nose out through the other side and getting this upper corner caught up in all the sticks and branches and everything else that's on the other side of that log and kickback becomes a real problem it's basically hard to keep track of where the nose of your bar is as you're going through it so that's part of the reason for shortening it for running such a short bar um, i prefer to use a few different techniques to be able to cut the full diameter of the log from one side uh, with a short bar versus running a longer bar where it's it's sticking out the other side i find another advantage of running uh, the short bars is it takes the weight off me the weight of the saw off me so overall the saw is lighter add to that when you start cutting i'm putting the spikes into the wood and then i'm pivoting the saw around so whilst i'm making that cut i'm not actually holding the weight of the saw it just gets that weight off me with a longer bar you, you generally you might be cutting further down the bar sort of holding the saw back to avoid going through the other side and keeping out of that tangled mess behind you where the kickback can occur so when you're doing that you've got to deal with the pulling 
force when you're cutting with the lower part of the bar um, as you're cutting the, the saw is trying to pull itself into the wood. With the shorter bar it's up against the spikes I'm not dealing with that it's just trying to dig itself into the bark and who cares about that I can just keep pivoting it around and then I'm only dealing with it when I've got to pull the saw back to reposition it. So you might go in make your first cut run it till it's you know almost vertical to get that far side when the the wood's bigger diameter than the bar and then from there I've got to deal with the weight as I pull it back that first time to reposition it we can just let it run down the side or if it's big enough we'll run it back up to vertical and then I just got to hold on to it for that last bit so it's just different ways of trying different techniques and different ways of trying to get the weight of the saw off me and onto the log as much as possible it makes it less tiring to work with um, there's a lot of talk and I I hate it people talking about longer bars reducing kickback if you've ever experienced kickback having a longer bar makes no difference having a heavier saw makes no difference the only difference it makes is now you have more energy and more force in everything coming back at you um, kickback is best dealt with by being aware of where that nose is always knowing where it is keeping an eye on it and more critically or probably some of the more critical stuff one the saw has a chain break make sure it works every time you use it make sure it works the, the second thing you need to check most saws now have an inertia kickback so as the kickback occurs the weight of the handle will activate the chain break as it comes back you can test this find a log or something hold the saw up let the nose drop into it make sure that chain breaks come on you'll need more height and a bit more force than I've given it there to activate it but you want to make sure that works one of the most critical steps you can take when using a saw to prevent kickback or injury from a kickback is that left thumb it has to you have to ensure that it wraps either sits underneath or wraps the handle what you're aiming to do what you're trying to avoid I'm guilty of this you will see it in videos I post I have a bad habit of doing this people will put as they start cutting they'll put their left thumb up on top of the handle like that when a kickback occurs your hand comes off there's nothing really you can't grip very well with your hand so you, the kickback occurs the thumb comes off at best you come through and you punch the chain break so hopefully you've stopped that chain but you haven't stopped the force of the saw coming back at you so it is critical to keep that thumb around there if a kickback occurs and your thumbs in there you've got all that foot all that area gripping it makes it much harder to come back if you're cutting in a situation where you cannot see the bar tip you can't see that dangerous area on the top lock your left arm straight there's some steps you can take to reduce kickback adding bar length is not a step of reducing kickback all right so that's some basic rambling about why I I run short bars I'm gonna make an effort in the next week or two to take some video of me actually doing it uh, I did post a short one but it really I just didn't have time to explain what was going on at the time when I was doing that so I'll try and make a bit of a step-by-step -step video of showing how I use it um, and show it in action just showing some of the cuts that I'm doing to allow me to cut larger diameter wood with a little short bar um, it might make a bit more sense if I can walk through it that way